So, um, one of the guys that uh, I've been talking to online and the uh, over Facebook was asking me a little bit about why you don't attack to the opponent's weapon. So here are just some of the demonstrations of the concepts that I was uh, talking about with him. So for instance, uh, there's one called the Nansetsen, which is pretty much the most, uh, uh, when you're in the Zutrachten, when you're in the initial phases of the fight and you're closing in, it's pretty much the uh, best way of dealing with this, or it's like the most direct. It's kind of like how the, um, in Longsword, the Absetsen works to like displace and counter uh, uh, most like kind of really basic techniques and it's like if everything else fails you can fall back on that so here's how it works say I cut and Bernhard would cut to my sword right now you're, you're cutting at my sword yeah see and then I thrust here that's all it is right so I cut like this he cuts to my weapon and I thrust him right and it, it works pretty much like anyway right I go like this he does that I pull the point and then thrust him right if I cut to here and he cuts to it right I, I just cut behind Right, so if I'm cutting to here, right, and ideally I'd be stepping out of the way. We we have a little bit limited space here. Um, so the onsetsin is the first reason, right? The next reason is, if we cut and we end up binding, right, and he's cutting against my weapon, right? What's going to happen is he's going to put a lot of pressure against me, and from here, what I can do is any of what I call the soft vinden, the vinden that go along with with his pressure, right? Because you can either be hard and displace him or you can be soft and he, he moves you, right? So over here, he's cut against me, right? I've got that, um, right? If, if we're a little bit closer, right? So if you start here and we get really close, right? And he does this, then I have that, right? It's, it's very easy, it's very fast, right? And if we're further out, right? As he's cutting like this, right? As he presses in, right? And I've got that. Um, if we're in a bind, or sorry, if he ends up cutting down into my blade, right? I cut like this, and he cuts down into it really hard. I've got that, right? Uh, um, long sword, it's it's a uh, but in uh, Master Durschwechsel is a different thing because reusing words is not fun. But I guess uh, what what option do you have? I mean. It's not like it's German where you could stick together like five other words, but you know. Um, you also have the major issue of depending on how hard they cut off to the side, it gives you, uh, uh, it basically allows you to do the tzuken. And you should understand that you're not doing the tzuken, it's really that your opponent is doing the tzuken for you and you just happen to be like having good posture and all this stuff and it results, right? So I cut to him, he cuts really hard to the side and my sword basically would go here, right? And again, we're not stepping because limited space and we're not wearing masks and this is mostly a demonstration of concepts, right? So I cut to him, he cuts here, right? My sword just ends up, it, these are slip, more slippery than steel, but I mean, if we have long swords, right? So it, it works too. Um, and and this, has happened in, uh, this has happened for us in free play actually, uh, specifically against uh, a lot of people who like, get really uh, uh, focused and obsessed with the opponent's sword, they'll start cutting in, right? So like if you start cutting and I start going uh, like this, right? And then I start to really want to push off to the side like this, all you do is, yeah, oh, that's okay. <laughs> right? <Sorry, Kevin. laughs> so if, if um, Bernhardt does the cut, or if I do the cut and Bernhardt displaces it, right? right? It goes like that. And it's more like if you go sideways, like really far sideways, so I cut and he goes like this, See? It just ends up happening. So even, yes, the synthetic swords are unfortunately extremely slippery, so they're not 100% uh, representative of how it would feel and exactly the dynamics, right? But it's possible. It, it happens. Um, we It's happened multiple times, um, like in free play where someone's just gone like, because, you know, they start getting tired or whatever, and they just want to push off to the side, and because uh, it feels like it's safe to do, and then that's what happens. Um, other main options? I don't know. Tsukin, Binden. Uh, yeah, well, I think we showed the Duke there. Right, we'll just run through them really quickly, right? If we're here and I cut like this, right? I have this. Um, if we cut in, if I'm cutting to him and he cuts here, I've got this. If we're closer, right? And I cut to him, right? I've got that. Um, uh, oh yeah, 
so if I cut here and he cuts down, right, I've got this. If I, oh, if he pushes really hard to the side, right, I've got that. Uh, the other main one is that if someone starts doing this, right, you have a lot of options to faint, right? You start going like this, right? We've got the whole idea of the thinker is to deal with people who are doing this, right? So I begin to cut like this, right? So I, the whole point of the thing, it's interesting because the thinker is kind of like a high shield how, uh, equivalent to longsword, right? Because if I'm going like this, see? This is like a, a high shield how. And then if you go like this, it's, I think, what, what is, uh, what does he call this, like, geisha how or so, uh, something like this, like, danger stroke? I don't know. So, some of the names are, it's hard to remember, like, the two different systems. But at any rate, so if I begin cutting like this, see, same idea as the um, onsetsen, but those are a few of the reasons why you don't want to cut against your opponent's blade and you want to occupy the center, right, and fight against him here. Because now, if I start, um, if he doesn't put pressure on and I start going like this, right, then you can go like this, or uh, 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 and, and then you, you would do an option item into my arm, and then, yeah, uh, and then, yeah. So, you have all kinds of those options, right, or he, he cleaves off my hand, and you know, he can do whatever he wants. So, just a couple examples of, uh, I have maybe five something examples of why you don't want to cut directly against your opponent's blade. Always strike, uh, we're told. Strike is uh, straight to the opponent's face or chest. Um, basically, you want to cut as though your point is being pulled by a uh, by like an elastic cord, like a bungee cord. Um, this is pretty much standard in, I would say, almost every kind of martial swordsmanship. It's always a uh, Cutting forward, right? Like forward, and then stepping behind it in order to uh, push it, right? So it's like um, even in like with curved swords, right? Like um, Japanese swords, even then, all of their main cuts, they're not like these slashing cuts. They're not like this, right? They're not pulling back like this, right? When they cut with those, they're actually cutting like this, boom, right? So like the impact goes down and they're driving forward. Um, if you look specifically for the uh, 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 schools of warfare, I can't remember the Japanese name for them, but Japanese swordsmanship based around wartime um, swordplay, it, it has all of that in it. The slashing thing, it, it essentially creates a much shallower cut. So you really want to be cutting forward and in, and ideally you want to be covering this distance, threatening with the point, right? And then stepping afterwards, right? So we move our hand, get into position, thrust, then step. And the idea is, if at any point you're, you get displaced, right? So I begin cutting like this, and you go like this, and you're doing that, right? And then you do the thrust and step, right? See, good. Now I have time to start doing techniques before he kills me. But if I'm standing in range, where if we get into a bind, and so say I just have this, right? If we've gotten into a bind here, and I can get the center line, and I can just snap my, my point forward, right? That's so fast that you're not going to have time to react. But if we're about here, right? It, say, you know what's coming, right? I'm going to do the thrust, right? So then if you try to do a catch, too, yeah, see? Now he has a hope of, of doing this, right? If I'm here, I'll thrust beside you, right? If we're here, yeah, see, I would have hit you for sure. So that's why it's important to maintain that distance. If you're stepping in right away, right, you get into really bad scenarios where we're like, boom, right? As soon as he displaces my cut, right? There's not a lot of time. If he's pushing in the direction away from me, there's not a lot of time for him to reverse that direction and all that. So this is a very important concept in all of German swordsmanship, quite specifically, but also every form of like battlefield-oriented swordsmanship or effect effective swordsmanship. So hopefully that makes sense.